America's great male flight from work began in earnest around 1965 and has continued virtually without pause since then. The timing of this fateful shift in work patterns may be significant. The year marked a watershed moment in American social history. It was then President Johnson rolled out his Great Society programs, giving birth to the modern welfare state as we know it today. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 initiated a huge new wave of immigration into the United States, substantially increasing legal and illegal immigration, boosting the country's population, and altering its ethnic composition over the past half century. But 1965 was also an important social milestone for another reason. It was roughly then that a national crime wave began to sweep over the United States. The reaction to the explosion of criminality crystallized in a national consensus that America should suppress crime by arresting, convicting, and incarcerating felons. For more than a generation, U.S. incarceration rates have been unique among advanced democracies. Released felons and ex-prisoners form a far larger fraction of the working-age male population than any other population group. These men with criminal records are disproportionately people of color and or those with low educational attainment. Amazingly, however, the U.S. government does not today bother to collect information on their employment patterns. As we shall see, a single variable, having a criminal record, is a key missing piece in explaining why work rates and LFPRs have collapsed much more dramatically in America than other affluent Western societies over the past two generations. This single variable also helps explain why the collapse has been so much greater for American men than women, and why it has been so much more dramatic for African-American men and men with low educational attainment than for other prime-age men in the United States. Some background here. Although crime statistics in America were arguably primitive half a century ago, such data as were available suggested crime levels had been more or less stable over the post-war era. Public perception also essentially tracked with those crime statistics. Starting in the mid-1960s, though, crime skyrocketed, and popular perceptions about crime followed. Public safety was generally believed to be worsening, perhaps dramatically. In the 1970s, Americans responded by enacting and enforcing more stringent measures against crime at the federal, state, and local levels. Vastly more convicts were sent to prison, and even more felons were processed through the criminal system via probation and community supervision. 